So I wanted to start the video off by saying that I am about a day late. The game is currently in maintenance right now. I'm about a day late on talking about this at the time you guys are seeing this video because I got preoccupied today and I hadn't had an opportunity to really talk about this. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Nonetheless, subscribe to the channel if you happen to be new. I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on Android 17 and my thoughts on like a team building for him. So stick around to the end of the video to get to that. We're going to break down another amalgam of units. So this is Super 17. Um, let's go ahead and see what he does, courtesy of the Reddit and koala Sun. So as always, if you guys are not already subscribed to the Dokkan Reddit, please go ahead and subscribe to the Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle Reddit. So Super 17 leader skill is the AGL Extreme God Lead, 3 key and 120% up to all stats with the super units getting one key and 50% to all their stats. Passive, reduce incoming damage by 40% and plus 30% attack for each time he gets attacked. Max is 120% and super attack is Electro Eclipse Bomb. Immense damage reduces defense greatly. It's like the most useless mechanic nowadays. It's so common. Doesn't really do anything on anything other than the Broly stage, to be honest. Links are Android Assault, Fear and Faith, Fusion, Nightmare, GT, which is expected, and Shocking Speed and Fierce Battle. I was really hoping they'd give him Shocking Speed, so I'm glad about that. And there are a couple of other Android 17s that are on the banner. There's going to be a Hellfighter 17 Intelligence Unit. His uh, leader skill is 3 key and 30% up to the stats for Intelligence and Physical Units. So he's another one of those dual type leads. Supreme Damage and a Rare Stun Chance is generally about 20% or in that area. Uh... Pretty similar links, to be honest. Brutal Beatdown's on there. And otherwise, it's basically the same link set. Brutal Beatdown instead of Fusion. What is Fusion? Is that Fuse Fighter, or what is that? I'm, I'm sure that's another link. Uh, I'd have to look at my game to see what that is, because I know it's a link that he can't only have by himself. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a link. Regardless, Android 17 also gets an AGL 17, buddy. AGL and Intelligence types get 3 key with the leader skill and 30% of the stats, and with the passive. And AGL and Intelligence units get 2 key and 25% up to their attack and defense. That's really good for them. Also, it's pretty good that there's no restriction on that, whether it's like, you know, hero or extreme units. So he could slide into like, if you're still leading with Super Vegito, he could slide into a team like that. Very good. Um, Supreme Damage lowers defense greatly. Sure, whatever. I don't care about that. Android Assault, Fear and Faith, Twin Terrors on here, as opposed to the Shocking Speed. The Innocence, Nightmare, Infinite Energy, and Fierce Battle. This one is a lot more Android friendly. The other one isn't as Android friendly. Um, he has a lot more of the links that are more mainstream. This one has a lot of the Android links, the AGL one. So, let's go ahead and talk about it. 17, Super 17 for starters. Is he good? Yes. Right? He's one of the best cards in the game. Why? On the merit of the leader skill alone. That's all that really matters. That's what held Broly as a top tier unit for forever. Physical Broly when he wasn't even that great. Still kind of isn't, but he's still you know a top tier unit. So that alone keeps 17 as relevant. It will give him use. It'll allow people to summon for him. And I'll talk about whether or not I think he's a unit should summon for too when I get to the team building stuff. So let's go ahead and break it down a little bit further. I'm not going to show a super attack in this because my internet's being a little wonky right now. What does Super 17 excel at? Well, he's a unit that if you get him and you apply the dupe system to him, his 40% reduction can be really solid. The good thing about that is, uh, or did I say dupe system, potential system, whatever. You know, the good thing about that is that it doesn't have a restriction on it. Like there's no HP restriction. And it also applies to super attack. So he's, if correct me if I'm mistaken, but he's the first... SSR with an unmitigated damage reduction like that, 40% isn't that good, but at the same time, that's what we said about Vegito Blue when he came out, and that was the main knock on him, is like, what's the point of giving him that? It makes his counters irrelevant if you're going to put him in there, and this guy's kind of the same way, right, because he is a slow unit. And a lot of times when we talk about the best units in the game, I try to stay out of that debate, but for a lot of times when we talk about it, it comes down to and boils down to how quickly a unit and their respective teams, at least from our perspective, you know, YouTubers, everything I always say is, hey, man, depends what you have individually, what you like to run and things like that. You know, something may be the best for you, may not be the best for somebody else, doesn't matter. But a lot of times when we take this analytical approach, it comes down to whatever team is cohesive and is quick. You know, because even if you have to use items, that's what items are there for. But some people look at it as a sense where like, hey, we don't want to use items. So that's fine, too. But regardless, Super 17 and another Super 17 is going to be 
pretty hell uh, trying to set up, you know, this guy offensively. He's going to be a good tank, especially, like I said, when you put him in the potential system because at this point, Vegito Blue takes double or triple digit damage, 100, you know, 80 damage, like, you know, things like that with a, you know, higher defensive stat through there. So that thing really did wonders for him and made him an amazing unit. He hits really hard, tanks really well with the best of them. So this guy I can see being pretty solid, and that's going to really shine on a super attack. Taking 40% less will be very useful. So don't sleep on that just because it's a lower number. I think we need to make sure people understand that. It will take some work to get that, you know, to be really, really good. It'll be solid out the gate, but it'll kind of be meh. But it'll get really, really good when you get him up there, especially if you get some dupes and things like that. Uh, as far as the attack mechanic, like I said, it's really slow. Um, you're safe throwing him in a horde of enemy attacks. He only needs, like, what, four attacks to get up there to 120%. It does suck that he maxes at 120% because he's so slow. You know that they're not afraid of giving something 150% because they gave Goku that. And the funny thing about that is they gave Super Saiyan 4 Goku 150% up on the passive mainly because he was so slow defensively. Like, it takes that guy two or three super attacks to really get defensively viable, right? So... Since they did that on him, they gave him a higher increase. So they could, could have done the same thing for this guy, but, you know, he doesn't have the same liability defensively. So I don't know. Maybe that was the mindset, or maybe they're just afraid to give anybody else other than a Goku unit the ability to go over 120%, right? Because nobody can go over 120% up on their passive other than him, the Super Saiyan 4 and the Super Saiyan 3. So conspiracy? I don't know. Regardless, maybe I'm forgetting something, but if I am, correct me, it's okay. Regardless, I think 17 is a really good unit, but the team's going to be super slow, and that's pretty much it. He's very blessed to get this AGL 17 at the bottom. He's going to be a, a shoe in on this team with Fierce Battle, with all the corresponding Android links. He's going to link very well with him. He's going to be nice as a roaming support, because your rotations will probably be Android 17, the Super 17, I mean, and uh, Rosé, because Rosé is going to be part of the hardest hitter on this team. You know, he's going to see himself pop back into the top 10 harders list, I'm predicting, unless it's already been calced again, regardless. And then another rotation with probably 17 and the LR androids. So something like that with some supporters like this guy and Salazar and things like that floating in the last slot. So do I think he's worth summoning? I do because he gives you the the usage of that type. Otherwise, you're, if you have Rosé, he's useless, right? Unless you're leading with him as a villain leader, which is fine. He's kind of useless. The androids are kind of useless. Unless you're using these units on a villain team, they're kind of useless at this point, right? So I don't want to say useless, but they have a lot less usability. So this is Android 17's card. I already showed it a little bit earlier. Uh, 11,000 attack, 10,000, or 11,000 HP, 10,000 attack, 5,000 defense. So he's going to be a pretty solid unit overall. This is the Intelligence Android 17. Okay, I do like how those you have those little icons on there. They have those icons on there for the 17 event because apparently super attacks that do key blasts are not going to work on his event. So I need a little more info on that. But regardless, that's him. And this is the Android 18 that I was gushing about. The 17, I mean, that I was gushing about. Speaking of 18, I didn't expect her to get an awakening, but it, they could have given her one. But this is the next best thing, if not the better thing. They just made a flat out supporting unit. You know, and I talked about in the previous video, the fact that Physical got that Gohan and that Super Boo that give 3 key and 40%, this is in the right direction, but this is clearly a step down. Like, AGL, Hero, and Extreme both need that to really, 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 really excel. That's a big difference, 25 to 50, or to 40, excuse me. I didn't think Heroes have anything like that. They have Gohan, that World Tournament AGL Gohan, I guess. But anyways, this is my amalgam for the team. So for the video, the purpose of this video, this Super 17, this 17 right here will actually be Super 17. This one will be the Trench Coat 17, the one uh, that's right over here, uh, this one. So that's him. So those two are automatically in the team. They're both going to be on the team regardless. They're both really good units. One's obviously the, the leader, right? You have to have him. You can't not have him. Um, well, I guess you could lead with Rosé if you wanted to, right? But anyways, Rosé is a shoe in That's three units. The LR androids are a shoe in as well. That's the crux of your team. Those are your rotations. That's your team right there. So what else do you need to fill in? So it kind of comes down to what you have. I don't think you need a tank like Frieza. I just don't think that you need a tank like Frieza when you have LR androids. The fact that the LRs are on the team, this is what bugs me so much when people say LR units can't take a hit. By virtue of their high stats, they're solid tanks on these 120% of teams. Like They get over 20, 25,000 defense. They're tanking all those normal hits. 
They may not take a super attack incredibly well, but on top of that, they're also supplying you with a lot of HP. You have a lot of HP when you have an LR unit in the team. I can see them having 280, 300,000. So with that, right, it kind of comes down to what you want. I don't think you need Frieza because you have those guys there. And they also, the androids also lower attack. So that's good. That also really helps 17. So uh, that, I don't think you need Frieza. Frieza could be something you sub in situationally, maybe if you're taking on a tech boss or something like that. So we're automatically going to kick Frieza off. Now, uh, a couple of interesting things, and to try to make this team a little faster, right? A couple of interesting things is the Boo and the other Boo, right? J Baby Janemba. Or that's actually Janemba and Baby, so never mind. Regardless, the Kid Boo and Janemba Baby. They're both healers. Kid Boo has Fierce Battle, but... Baby Janemba has better links otherwise at shocking speed and also does 12% on the heal while Kid Buu does 10. I don't know why that's still loading. So if you wanted to run one of them, I don't know. It kind of comes down to you. If you wanted the extra output or the extra heal, if you're going to run a healer, I'd probably just run Janemba because you're obviously running the heal for a reason. Uh, Kid Buu's not really going to offer you anything offensively. He's more of a defensive stall unit. So if you're running a stall team, this the, that's the thing about this team. Due to the nature of 17, this team is going to innately be slow. It's just going to be a slow team. It, it just really is. It's not going to be like a, a team that can outpace Super Saiyan 4 team or cooler team, whatever it is. So if you want that, you can. I just, I'm not going to run them. This is more or less for me personally, me showing you guys my thought process. So I'm actually going to kick both of them off, right? And now we have a little bit, uh, a little bit less congestion here. So as far as Nova Shenron, do I think you need a sealer? No, I don't think you need a sealer on any team. There are a couple of sealers or two or three sealers that have Fierce Battle now at this point, and they've kind of snuck their way onto optimal teams, or the physical heroes will be on optimal teams eventually. Go Tanks and Bardock, depending on what you choose to run, because Bardock has a interesting case with that passive, so it kind of just depends. But regardless, do I think you need a sealer? No. Uh, do I think you need an R sealer at that, a rare sealer? Heck no. Uh, will I, do I think that having a sealer on this team could be... Uh, a good thing. Yes, I do, because obviously 17 doesn't have to take a super attack. You're going to be throwing 17 in a lot of Super Vegito scenarios in between a bunch of Horde attacks to where he can actually get set up. So in that scenario, that could be good, having a sealer on there. He doesn't have to take a super attack or, you know, God forbid, multiple super attacks in the future. Like, that could be a viable thing in the future. Just for now, optimally speaking, I don't think you really need a sealer on the team. So I'm actually going to kick him off, okay? So now that we've got that done, all right, this is where it gets a little bit funner, and I say that, you know, the probably the biggest knock to 17, aside from how slow he is, which is okay, it's a different mechanic, they're trying to be different, and I, I can appreciate that, and by the way, really quick before I say what I was going to say, Andrew, or excuse me, AGL Bojack will get a Dokkan Awakening, I don't know how good he'll be, assuming he gets a nice passive, 70, or not, not 70, that's too low, but 80, 90 plus percent up on the passive, he could be a viable option for the team, but for this, I'm going to just kind of disregard him. Uh, everybody else is kind of just fodder, to be honest. But kicking off the, the Boo and the Janemba, who shouldn't even be here anymore in the Frieza, so I don't know why they still are, but okay, we're going to just ignore them. Um, the last one that I really thought, and I lined up all the guys I thought were pretty situational, was Android 18. She could be situational on this team. She could be good support for the Androids. I just feel like you know, you have enough support on this team, or you will have enough support with the Rosé, with the Android 17 that's coming out. Like, I just don't feel like you really need that. Also, the links that they share on the team, the fact they're starting with 6 key anyway, uh, they'd be on rotation with an L with a Super 17, so they're going to get key from him. I have to do the math and see how much that is. I just don't feel like you really need her. She kind of holds back the team by not offering anything offensively or offering anything uh, to allow the allies to hit harder. That's a really big theme in this game now with these 120% up leads. So, the question then becomes, who takes the last couple slots? All right, so who takes the last couple slots? I'm going to slide Cooler in. I feel like Cooler, you know, Big Bad Bosses isn't really a thing on this team because that's a massive knock on 17. I was going to talk about that. It really does suck that he doesn't have that. I don't know why, but maybe because they wanted to make sure they gave him, like, GT and all that other stuff that they had to give him, like, those Android links. So that makes sense in that regard, but still, that would have been really good for him. He kind of needed that to really uh, excel a little bit better because that's kind of what pushes Cooler in a lot of regards to being towards the top of the list in that area as far as, like, you know, 
damage output, tanking ability, and things like that. Being a bad boss is, is a, such a universal, versatile link. So it's kind of unfortunately, it's kind of unfortunate that he doesn't have it. But this coolish passive does help simulate that a little bit. If you put him in the third slot as a roamer, you know he could get on rotation with um, with uh, what's his face seventeen the Super 17 and allow Super 17 to tank and hit harder, tank better and hit harder. So I'm going to throw them on there. So we have five units there. Who among this bunch takes the last slot? It's kind of up to you as the player. I think for me personally, though, I want another support unit in that last slot, and I'm probably going to throw in Thouser. Either Thouser or Bojack, depending on that, how good Bojack is, uh, he could take this slot. But for now, this is the team I'm running, and these are like the first subs in for the situationals on the right. Um, a lot of versatility on this team, a lot of key support, a lot of offensive and defensive support because Thouser gives two key and 20% attack and defense, I believe. So there's a lot there. Cooler just doesn't, doesn't give any key, but he does give 30% to both stats. So there's a lot of versatility on this team. So that's what the AGL team is kind of looking like. Um, it's kind of weird because the support units won't hit hard at all, but the main hard hitters will be Rosé and the Super 17 is and, and Androids will probably be the third hardest hitters on the team, something like that. Is that enough, right? Rosé is amazing, always has been, but I don't think that he's enough to push this team over. You know, 17 kind of just needed to be a unit like the other ones to truly make this team excel, but the problem with that is I understand they were trying to break the mold because all the other units were the same, and I don't know why this is really glitching on the side over here, but yeah, they were trying to break the mold and not make all the units the same, so it makes sense, but in doing so, they kind of hindered the team, so it's a, it'd be a good team, it's a good banner to pull on, um, but to really make it excel, you're going to need both of the 17s, and that's kind of a problem, so Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below as far as Super 17 goes. I'm not going to say he sucks because he doesn't. I'm also not going to say he sucks because it's premature. I'm also not going to say it sucks because he's not even out yet. So reserve judgment, please, and uh, wait for some videos on it from us and you know try to pull him and play with him yourself and things like that to really form an opinion on him because we've done that too many times in this community where we look at something and say, hey, he's not very good or underwhelming. We said that about Buhan, and Buhan popped off as being one of the best – you know, the best or second best unit in the game for a while, right next to Super Vegito. So, anyways, thank you for tuning into today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Have an awesome day. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you happen to be new. Of course, if you're interested, follow me on Twitter. The link is in the description. Same goes for Instagram. I'm posting stuff about Dragon Ball Heroes over there on my Instagram. So, go ahead and follow me over there, too. But have an awesome day, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.